Imagine if the Earth were flat. Consider a flat world scenario. How would eclipses appear? If so, how would gravity operate? What would the day's passage be like? Although it requires quite a bit of imagination, is a flat planet physically feasible beyond what one particular group of people can imagine? We learn in school that there are eight planets in our solar system, including the Earth, and that all celestial bodies, including planets, are spherical in shape. However, despite how spectacular that may sound, some individuals now assert that the planet is flat. What if the planet were flat, though? Would there be a difference between the flat Earth and the sphere? Let's examine a few consequences that would occur frequently if the planet were flat. Goodbye gravity, have you ever questioned why planets are spherical? Why are the stars, moon, and sun all spherical as well? The basic solution is gravity. As you probably well know, gravity is that enigmatic force that pulls everything toward the center of the Earth. Although, according to physics, gravity is actually a deformation of space-time, we may nevertheless describe gravity as the force that attracts objects with mass. Massive celestial bodies like planets, stars, and natural satellites are rounded due to gravity. The center of gravity is where all the matter gathers when a celestial body forms because of gravity. Gravity starts to act at this center, and as gravity is constant in all directions, the celestial body gradually takes on a spherical shape. What about a flat world, therefore, if gravity is the reason the Earth is spherical? As absurd as it may appear, folks who think the planet is flat do not believe in gravity. As you listen, they view gravity as a matter of beliefs rather than objective reality. However, because it is a disk and not a sphere, the flat Earth would also experience the effects of gravity. At the very least, those effects would be peculiar. In a sphere, the center of gravity is in the center, whereas in a disk, it is exactly in the middle. Things wouldn't tumble down on a flat Earth because the center of gravity would be in the North Pole, where they would fall in the opposite direction. Can you picture the mayhem that would result? Nothing would exist as it does today, things wouldn't collapse, trees would grow sideways, and rain would pour in an opposite direction as well. It would also be impossible to leave the flat planet by the edges because the gravitational pull would be so strong that you would have to crawl as if you were climbing a mountain instead of walking. If a flat Earth had its center of gravity at the North Pole, objects that are not anchored to the ground would gather there, including air and water. In other words, on a flat globe, all the ocean water and all the atmospheric air would collect in the center like enormous bubbles, leaving neither water nor air in the locations that are farthest from the center. On a flat Earth, inhabitants in Australia and Argentina would not have access to water or fresh air. I can now see why some proponents of the flat Earth removed Australia from the map, making it simpler to explain everything. Farewell, magnetic field, the molten iron and nickel core of our spherical globe rotates continuously, creating a strong magnetic field that envelopes the whole world and shields us from harmful solar radiation. What occurs, though, on a flat Earth? Such a core doesn't exist, to be plain. Flat Earthers assert that there is no core. Since we cannot detect the Earth's magnetic field, it follows that it does not exist as well. Therefore, it must be a fabrication of the elite in order to keep selling you sunscreen when you visit the beach and prevent you from realizing that there is no magnetic field. Let's ascend once more on the reality jet. There wouldn't be a magnetic field on a flat Earth. As a result, solar radiation would evaporate everything in its path, and the loss of the magnetic field would cause the extinction of all life on Earth. The DNA of the few remaining organisms would be irreparably damaged, and they would have to find a way to endure on a planet without atmosphere, air, or water. Days and evenings flat earthers believe that day and night are very different from how we know them, as if the above weren't bizarre enough. Day and darkness are a result of the Earth's rotation on our spherical globe. It is regarded as having turned completely when a day has gone. Simple and elegant, right? On the side that faces the sun, it is day, and on the other, it is night. 
The sun and moon are currently too big and dull for flat earthers, so they decided to make it more entertaining by making them smaller and making them circle the earth pointlessly. This is the flat earth theory, thus it's not a joke. In the flat earth theory, the sun and the moon rotate above the earth rather than the earth and the other planets revolving around it. What about the other planets, though? We'll discuss more about that later, though. Let's revisit the flat earth model with the sun and moon rotating and add some science to it. The sun and moon are always present in the sky according to the flat earth model, which is somewhat contradictory given that if the sun were always present, it would always be daylight on the flat earth regardless of where it was. Only if the sun rises on one side of the disk and sets on the other could there be day and night on a flat world, albeit this would radically alter how we think about cardinal points. The cardinal points on a spherical Earth are determined by the direction that the sun rises and sets, in this example, east and west. But wouldn't the sun rise in the south and rise in the south as well on a flat Earth? The sun would rise in the south, move across the north, and then return to the south because the south is the edge of the disk in its entirety. If you appreciate this video, please leave a like. If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Eclipses when the Earth, Moon, and Sun line up, eclipses take place on our spherical planet. If the Moon is in the path of the Sun, it is referred to as a solar eclipse, and if the Earth is in the path of the Moon, it is referred to as a lunar eclipse. If the planet were flat, we would have to use the exact same strategy in order for an eclipse like this to happen. It would, however, be somewhat different since, during a lunar eclipse, the Earth's shadow would be cast on the moon as a straight line rather than a circle because that is the shadow of a disk. The solar eclipse, on the other, is even more challenging because, according to the flat Earth theory, the sun and the moon spin in the same plane, making it impossible for the moon to be positioned at any given time directly between the sun and the Earth. Even if it did, solar eclipses would only last a few seconds since the sun is so small and moves so quickly in the flat Earth concept. The experience wouldn't be as amazing as an actual eclipse. Issues relating to the size of the sun as we've seen thus far, proponents of the flat Earth have a vivid imagination, but it's not always grounded in reality. When we consider that Hipparchus of Nicaea calculated the distance from the Earth to the Moon more than 2,000 years ago and estimated that this distance was approximately 348,000 kilometers, it seems absurd that the Sun and Moon in the flat Earth model are located a few kilometers above the surface of the Earth and measure about 50 kilometers in diameter. It turns out that the Moon is only 50 kilometers in diameter and is situated a few hundred kilometers above us, according to a calculation that was done more than 2,000 years ago and is now fairly close to the actual one. The issue with the flat Earth theory is that the Sun only has a diameter of 50 kilometers, but can there really be a star that big? There are neutron stars in the cosmos that, if they can, have exactly that diameter. However, as we are well aware, neutron stars have an unfathomable mass and produce radiation that might instantly evaporate the entire solar system's planets. Therefore, a star the size of the flat Earth model cannot exist outside of neutron stars, and even if such a star did, at that distance, it would be sufficient to burn and destroy the entire planet in a matter of seconds. No living thing could endure the sun's warmth, which exceeds 5,000 K, and its plasma jets, which can reach temperatures of several thousand degrees. Furthermore, the flat Earth would be destroyed by the sun's presence because, even if it were small, the sun would still have a lot more mass than the Earth. As a result, the solar's gravitational force would be considerably stronger. There cannot be a little sun like the one in the flat Earth theory. Are all the other planets flat as well? What about the other planets in the solar system, we must wonder after seeing all this. Are there flat planets? Do all planets have their own moons and tiny suns? We discovered there is no agreement regarding the other planets after studying all the flat Earth forums. 
Some proponents of the flat earth theory believe that planets are a NASA fabrication and that any images obtained through telescopes are the result of such modifications. Others contend that although planets exist, they are flat and that our perception of them as round is caused by telescopes. Others assert that since Mars has been observed to be spherical, only the Earth is flat. In other words, according to this group of flat earthers, the Earth is flat because science and observations say so, the same research and observations that show Mars is spherical. Inconsistent, isn't it? However, it is clear that unlike scientists, flat earthers are not completely organized and do not share many common viewpoints. The fact is that this group lacks any solid justifications for believing in a flat earth from a scientific standpoint. Because they have no other ideas than to outright reject their own reality, those who hold such beliefs are often referred to as deniers. They are unable to comprehend science and are unwilling to do so since their theory is not supported by facts or evidence, but rather by a strong conviction that gives them security and comfort by leading them to believe that they are correct. Evidence and facts do not convince a flat earther because their thought is not founded on facts, but on a strong faith that allows them to escape reality and leads them to feel that they have discovered the truth. They reject reality and embrace the illusion in which they believe. No matter how many facts you present to someone who thinks the earth is flat, they will always respond, no, I claim the earth is flat, and continue. Sadly, those who hold this perspective are quite susceptible to picking up other, even more ridiculous ideas, including the denial of global warming, the non-existence of diseases, or the dangers of immunizations. So that people doubt instead of denying and ponder instead of believing, we must foster a sense of inquiry throughout society. How do you feel? Why is there no society for a flat moon? Share your thoughts with us in a thoughtful remark.